this episode of TFL Off-Road and TFL Truck, I get picked up. Okay. Dismount. I found the biggest pickup truck of them all. Get it, pickup truck? This is a ginormous Oshkosh 10x10, and this is Jay, its owner. Jay, you build all kinds of Unimogs and some really big off-roaders, but this is bigger than most. This is this is the big, big, yeah. It's definitely huge. Um, it's called an Oshkosh PLS. It's a 10x10. Um, it's a cool rig. It's this is not your normal um, uh, Hammett that people. It is, but it's the newer version. So this one's unique. It's got the independent suspension down underneath, just like the six by six we were playing with on one of uh, one of our little test runs. So that's always cool. Locking differentials on all five axles, which is a super bonus because um, most of them do not have that. It's powered by. Don't quote me. It's either a fifteen or a sixteen liter cat. So enough. It's got enough, yeah. It's um, so it's kind of interesting. People, people ask about fuel economy. You know, on the German trucks, it's pretty good. I'm um, five and a half to maybe six and a quarter miles per gallon. This guy will do 65, and at 65, it's 2.6 miles per gallon. So it's not the Econo Cruiser for sure. So this is, it's obviously a military vehicle, and it's primarily used for transporting things on the back here. Yep. So this is probably the coolest feature of the whole rig. Um, is this is a load of a palletized rack system so you could load like our small bulldozer or our unimogs on this rack at ground level <clears throat> tie it down makes it nice and easy and then we come by with a big hook <clears throat> and you pick the whole thing loaded up and go so it's rated the hooks rated for thirty five thousand pounds it will definitely do a lot more than that we found out um but a neat rig you've got four steering front tires followed by two counter steering rear tires and it still turns like the Queen Mary. <laughs> it doesn't, there's not a lot of uh, tight angle, but it's really cool to see it in action. I mean, it's long. I wouldn't imagine that it would turn very quickly, but this is just one of the coolest vehicles that I've seen yeah. maybe ever. So we had to come take a look at it. Now, a few other really interesting things about this. Not only does it have lockers on all five axles, like you mentioned, and it's got 10 wheels, which is good for traction, yeah. but you can also air down and air up from within the cab, yep. right? CTIS for central tire inflation. That's a central tire inflation system. So it's a neat system. You've got multiple pressures, tonnage ratings as far as how heavy you are, sand conditions. If you have a hole in the tire, you have an emergency run flat on there. Run flat meaning not the typical run flat, but constantly pumping air to that. Right. And it has a big compressor, which is nice. But it's it's unique. Like the counter steer, this is kind of rude crude, you know, American way. We get it done dirty. The rear steer is an actual drive shaft that's coming off of the front steering box to a second steering box in the rear, which is just really wild. Look at that. Isn't that neat? You got another drag link going in there, and it's just a its a pretty easy way to do it to keep it in sync without having to use any computer control on that. And you've got a hell of a leaf pack in yep, here. Yeah, the leaf pack is substantial. This is definitely a 10-ton truck. Um, it's its a big boy. Uh, it's, it's just the ground clearance isn't overly good, um, but its it's just cool, man. You got airbags in the rear. Hendrickson style suspension in the, in the rear rear. Yeah, it's hard to determine which one's rear. From the front <laughs> axle, the second from the front axle. Is this the third from the front or the middle? Okay. I call that the middle axle. I call that the middle axle. Yeah, yeah we'll call that the And then the rear and then the rear rear axle. So pretty cool. And you can tell from well, just the size of the the pole points on this thing. It, it is, this is all business, man. It is a, it's the real deal. So this is one of our other recovery rigs. Uh, that lift hook system is is the only way to go. <clears throat> As we start winching big trucks over anything that's over, call it uh, fifteen thousand pounds, they just gravity keeps winning and pulling you into the earth. This thing we actually pick it up and move. The mobility of it's not as good as the MANs, but um, 
it's just brawny. When you got to pull out the big guns, this is these are the big guns. And what's what I did not mention earlier, we have the most gnarly German snow chains, mud chain snow chains, the Grufsteg chains. I have a full set for this truck. Wow, which that's, you put that's the, a lot of chains. You, you put the chains on this thing. It doesn't stop. Air How down, long does that up. take to chain Woo. up all 10 wheels? 10 of those guys. It's got to be an hour worth it's an of hour and a half. chain. Yeah. It's at least an hour and a half, and that's with another buddy helping you. <clears throat> but uh, it's just a really cool rig. And, you know, it's actually got air conditioning. Again, oh, so it'll do 65. Luxurious. Yeah, this is like modern for, for us. You know, modern followed by really rude and crude stuff, like the full piano hinge door. <laughs> the mirrors are awful. Uh, but... There's not a whole lot of real estate in this guy. So here's your padlock. Oh, that's, a, that's a good lock. <laughs> no push system. button. You got a padlock in there. And then these are like a truck latch is what it feels like. But it's a relatively organized cockpit. It's pretty straightforward to figure out how it all works. Um, it's just a nice setup. It's it's really interesting coming over a breakover um, because you're really over the front end on this thing. That's a huge skid plate. So it's... It gets your attention. I'll definitely say that. It really gets your attention. But so how do you how do you go through the gears on this? Is it automatic or do you select the gear? This is one of our few automatics, yeah. Okay. So the transmission is something you'd see in a crane truck. It's uh I can't remember what Allison it is, but oh man, it's big. It's huge. <laughs> it's honestly it's the same size as Brian, our six by six, and which is totally overkill for that. I mean it's overkill for this, yet alone that's just insane. So it's neat, you know, it's got all the cool goodies on there. So on the subject of size, uh, a few other things. So tire size, how many inches would this be? These are 53s. 53s. So some guys call them 54s, but those are the guys who are insecure. Ah, so right. <laughs> <laughs> so 53 inch tire, 16 inches wide. Let's see, the rated, I think at over 16,000 pounds. Let's see here. Uh, nope, I'm sorry, 14, 000, only 14,540 oh, pounds. Per what a tire. disappointment. Yeah, oh. per tire. So overall length, do you know around about how long this entire rig is? Oh God, we are, it is probably 34, probably 34 feet long. Yeah, I'd say it's all of that. And and do you know around about how much it weighs? Yes, 57,000 empty. Yeah? 57 that empty. Sounds about right. And so how much capacity do you have how much can you load up onto the back and pull up there with the crane? So they're saying <clears throat> the lift hook will do more than 35,000 pounds lift, but they rate it for 35,000 pounds. But that is U.S. military off-road spec. So that's 35,000 pounds going through moguls and whoops and all that fun stuff. <laughs> so over the highway, if you were legal to do it, I mean, I would have no problem putting... If I could do 34, probably 60. I, this thing will handle 65,000, 70,000 on the back of it. No problem. How much like, have you had on the back here? Mm, I've only had my dozer and then the flat rack. So in that 30 plus thousand pound mark, I put some of the mogs up on it too. Um, it'll handle more than that because my scraper, when, when I'm loaded, I'm 50,000 pounds. No, I'm 100,000 pounds. Um, it picks the whole front end of the scraper on the air before <laughs> the chain lets go. So that's got to be... I don't know if I'm 50,000, 60,000 there, but I'm picking the whole thing up and it's only rated for 34, 35. So it's got a little extra. So you said you can do 65 on the highway. I'm assuming that's round about the top speed. Yep, you're wound up pretty good at 65. I would imagine. Um, you got a double overdrive on it, I do believe. Um, it's actually pretty comfortable. You know, it's not bad. The center of gravity is not as good as like my man cat. So I get a little nervous laying this thing onto a side hill. Right. Um, plus if it did go over, I'd probably fare okay. I think it's low enough to the ground. But um, it's one of the coolest looking rigs. Just the, the whole profile, that little pointed nose. It's just really neat looking. So it's it's cool to see when I'm picking up that scraper loaded with sand, you watch all six of these rear tires completely squashed flat. <laughs> like just all the way down. And then uh, I'll sit there and try to pull it out and you just watch all 10 wheels just bury down. Blah, 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 blah. And then it gets ugly because then this is stuck also. So then we bust out a cat. If the cat gets stuck, then we bust out another. It just uh, perpetuates itself with uh, craziness. So I'm assuming that the uh, the whole crane system is hydraulic? Yep. You've got a hydraulic system, a big, juicy, I can't remember the gallon per minute amount, but it's it's substantial. Um, so you could put other implements on there. You know, what's kind of cool is you've actually got a little stairway up here that goes to where the spare tire is. <laughs> so up on the top here, as you get on, and there's little handrails and whatnot, you keep climbing up. It's great for parties. People can camp yeah. out on top and just hang out. 
this is your crane mechanism through here. So you pull out the components, slide in, and then grab the spare. Because the spare is probably 800, maybe 850 pounds. You can crane it off, set it down off the side there. Just cool. And I mean, yeah, it's a dance party up here. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. We so, got <laughs> how do you get the actual one of the wheels off the ground to replace tire if you have to? Uh, we've got some pretty substantial bottle jacks, and then there's there's tricks with pry bars. So any of the big truck guys know this. Um, the Germans kind of perfected it though. There's two little studs that go onto the actual wheel that are little pointed studs, and we have a special set of uh, pry bars with cones on each end. So you roll your tire, you put it through the holes, you get it on the little studs, and then you lift and it'll slide and drops it right on. So a skinny guy like me at 165 pounds come out almost a 900 pound wheel. Nice. Which is saying a lot. Now if it gets on bal off balance and starts coming your way, then it's bad. So just get out of the way. Get out of the way, yeah. But once it goes down, you're not getting it up. So <laughs> anyway. Well, this is such a cool rig and it's amazing standing up here. I mean, it is. It's, it's like you're standing on a, a little land yacht. I mean, this thing is just gigantic. Crazy amount of hydraulic lines and everything going around here. I mean, look at the running gear. Is this the back of the transmission? <laughs> That's from the transmission to the transfer case, yep. Look at that. Shaft. And then that giant two and a half, almost three inch line, two and a half. That's just your main hydraulic feed. The hook loader system's being removed. We'll get the Mancat as of the new PLS. This is getting a full expedition body from here out with a living quarter, not a living, but a driving quarters up here with the living quarters behind it and expandable through there. And then we'll have this where you could climb up in there. We'll set up flat screen monitors with cameras in the front so the kids back here don't get car sick. And this will end up being A, driving for the second group of people, and B, it's the mudroom for when you go into the house. And then on top of that, we've also got, there's a pretty big camper right through here that could expand out, but oh, yeah. we have a matching trailer for it. Really? So it's a six wheel trailer, same configuration. So you have the main house here, and then the secondary house pulled behind it. <laughs> so this is just going to be your apocalypse RV. This will, this will end up being, actually we've got a gentleman who, uh, this is earmarked for him. It's That's his deal. He, he absolutely wants it. He's just, uh, you know, now everyone's going to say, well, where do you take something that big? Anywhere you can fit it, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you do, wherever you can go. <laughs> so you got the capacity to go on for, I mean, I could carry a thousand gallons of fuel if it was legal. I could do whatever on it. So it's a cool rig, you know, it's kind of your neat apocalypse rig. And for uh, secondary usage, you could, you know, it works great for us around here for our recovery stuff and for hauling big things around. Yeah, I mean, and like you said, this is an insane amount of space to be able to build out a living living quarters. I mean, there's just a ton of room up here. And how high is your camper going to be? So full walking height, it is actually only going to be this tall. Okay. So under 12 foot, um, well under 12 foot, because this deck we will be able to lose somewhere around 10 inches of deck height once we remove the PLS system. And then the expedition body will be quite a bit lower sitting, you're standing at a look about so. And then the box will come up with doorways through here and then carry out through the back. And then the other trailer will have, the other trailer will have the, uh, the box there will also be an expanding shelter that will be for when the kids bit misbehave. I don't know. It's just <laughs> <laughs> it's extra space, food, you know, your provisions, water, maybe um, we're trying to figure out we're going to put all the extra fuel and whatnot. But yeah, this is the rig that you could like just go and disappear and full on home forever. So basically, if you want to build the most insane camper ever, not only based on Unimogs, which is what you usually do, but really based on any just wild vehicle, then yeah. you got to give our guy Jay a call. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're into the big iron. <laughs> Absolutely. So how should people get in contact with you? So easy. Couchoffroad.com. So Couch Offroad Engineering is the company. Um, you'll see it on great channels like TFL Truck, obviously. So cool Awesome. Stuff. Well, Jay's your guy. Definitely give him a shout. Let us know in the comments what you think of this huge, insane vehicle. Catch you guys in the next video.